Hello guys, this is Mike Sawatsky from North Country Cycle and Sports in Thunder Bay and today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about Hummingbird Fish Finders. I get a lot of customers in the store talking to me about fish finders, asking me different questions and I want to come to you guys today with a bit of a basic look at uh, fish finders and the technology. I'm going to give you one little tip here on how to set it up for people that maybe bought a boat this year, last year that have fish finders that have just gone out there, turned them on and kind of left them. Uh, if you're looking at buying a new boat this year for next year, this will also help you in letting you know how to set your fish finder up when you get one. So I want to talk about the different cone angles and frequencies that these fish finders work on. And the most basic of all is the sonar. And 2D sonar, I'm going to show you on this unit right here. This is what 2D sonar looks like, okay? So in this, we have different frequencies that we can send a signal down to the bottom of the lake um, that's going to give us a return to show us what's on the screen. So, oops. Here you'll see in the very top, okay? So what I've done is I've, I've hit my menu once, which brought me just to the, the menu for the sonar. And then when I hit menu again, it brings up the main menu for the settings. And when I click the sonar tab and go down one, it gives me my 2D frequency. So here you can see I've got 200, degree, uh, 200 kilohertz. I've got 83 kilohertz. So I've got 83 and 200. Now what's the difference between the two? 83 kilohertz is going to give us the widest beam and give us the most coverage on the ground. So if you're in 30 feet of water, the cone angle and the bottom coverage that an 83 kilohertz frequency is going to give you is going to be 30 feet on the bottom. So it's one to one. So if you're in 10 feet of water, it's going to give you 10 foot of coverage. 30 feet of water is going to give you 30. Now, if I switch this frequency to the 200 frequency, it's going to give me a one to three ratio. So in 30 feet of water now, it's only going to cover 10 feet on the bottom. So the deeper you go, um, you could see if you were in that 83, it would give you a huge area and you're going to be so far off the side of the boat, you're, you're going to be nowhere in the, in the vicinity of those fish. So in deeper water, we want to use this 200 hertz uh, beam. And what it's going to do is it's going to give us a sharper image of those fish down deep. It's going to give us a better picture because now it's just concentrating in a smaller area. In contrast, in a shallow in shallow water, if you're fishing for bass, maybe in five foot of water, six foot of water, we want to be on 83 hertz, so we cover a much bigger area. Because if we have that 200, we're going to cover a very small area, and we're only going to cover one third of that uh, that that footprint. So if you're in 10 feet of water, you're only covering three feet, so it's not a very big area. So it's very important we use the right beam uh, depending on the water we're in. Now, if you're someone who goes from deep to shallow to deep to shallow lots through the day, we have one more option, and that's where we blend the 83 and the 200 uh, kilohertz together, and it gives us a best overview of all situations. So I'm going to show you this. <coughs> okay. Now, if you look, if I go to the right, there's our, our blended beam. So we got 83 and 200. So just remember... 83 is for shallow water, 200 is for deep water, and if we just want to set it and forget it, I recommend the 83 to 200, okay? So now you'll see there's lots of stuff on my screen right now, and one thing I do recommend is I recommend everyone to, on a hummingbird unit, go down into your sonar settings and come down to this little thing called switch fire and switch it to clear mode. And you'll see it takes a lot of stuff out of our screen. And what all this stuff is, is this is just filler, okay? It's a zooplankton, it's stuff floating in the water. Um, you know, these were trees, these were bushes. Um, but what happened over here, you're still going to get the, the bigger signals. Now, my sensitivity is cranked down quite a bit, so I'm going to put it up to about 12 or 13. You can see we've got an arc on the bottom here. That's a fish. This is going to be a fish, okay? Um, nothing real strong there, but there's a fish there, okay? You can see we're going to come into a tree. 
but it becomes a little bit easier to read than the maxed out screen. So I hope those I hope those tips helped you. If you guys have any questions, uh, any questions on your fish finders that you have now currently, you want to know how to maybe make the screen clearer, you want to know how to read it, what does a fish look like, what does a rock look like, what does a tree look like, feel free to comment in the video below here and uh, definitely I can, I can start talking to you and help you out. If there's anything you want to see a uh, video on on the fish finders, let me know. I mean, I've got a lot of knowledge on this stuff and I don't mind helping you guys out. That's what I'm here for. So please uh, ask away. If you know anyone looking at fish finders or maybe needs a little help on learning them, please feel free to tag them in this video, share this video with them. So, all right, guys, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for checking in tonight and we will talk soon.